election is here's what's for sure. Uh, this speech has divided our Congress and our political parties, but also somewhat the community of Jewish people here in the States and in Israel. So let's get both sides of what is certainly a, deba a debate. We have Jeremy Benemy. He is uh, president of J Street, a group that opposes the prime minister's speech, and Rabbi Shmuley Botiak, founder and executive director of the group This World. He is strongly supportive of the prime minister and these efforts. Uh, let's start with this. Benjamin Netanyahu says, Rabbi, my speech is not intended to show any disrespect to President Obama or the esteemed office that he holds. I have great respect for both. Doing this is, by definition, disrespectful to the president. Why hide that fact? Well, no one wants to disrespect the president, and no one wants to breach protocol. But you have a tiny little country that is facing annihilatory threats by the government, which is the largest state sponsor of terror in the world. What's he supposed to do, remain silent? This is a historic day. In Czechoslovakia in 1938, they weren't even consulted about a deal between France, Britain, and Germany that utterly undermined the security, dismembered their nation. This is a historic day because America allows a foreign head of government to speak out and say right. that this is a bad government, but it's this not is a, a bad deal. But it's not America, Rabbi, and that's the point to you, Jeremy. America, you know, what does that word imply? It must imply a unified position, and it isn't. And we assume the prime minister knew that. There were stories that maybe the prime minister was told bo you know, both sides of Congress wanted this, and he was a little hoodwinked, but assuming he now knows what he's getting into, he's still going forward. Is this a dangerous move? Well, the question is whether or not, for those of us who care deeply about Israel's security, does undermining the bipartisan basis of support for Israel in this country damage Israel's security in the long run? And the, the risk is that this issue is becoming a partisan football, just like every other issue on the American political scene. If you have a speech that is supported by the Speaker of the House uh, in an effort to embarrass the sitting President of the United States, not telling him, going behind his back instead of coordinating it uh, with the White House, and it's done also to advance the Prime Minister's own political agenda in the state of Israel, which are, where he has an election in two weeks, uh, you have to question whether or not this was done to advance Israel's security or to advance two political agendas. And that's not good for Israel in the long run. The Prime run. Minister says the last thing I would want is for Israel to become a partisan issue. Do you believe that, Jeremy? Well, it's become a partisan issue, and this speech will be looked back at a generation from now as possibly the moment when it really shifted the conversation here from broad bipartisan support to making it just like every other issue. And I think that's a legacy and a really unfortunate thing for the state of Israel. Rabbi, the way you're setting this out it was somewhat undercut by the idea of sensitive information being shared. That's scary. It seems threatening. It seems destabilizing to the White House. Why go there? First of all, I think that more information should be revealed about this deal. This deal affects the security of the United States of America. The American people are, are being kept slightly in the dark about this deal. We are the great Satan. It was American hostages, not Israeli hostages, that were held for 444 day, four days by the mullahs. It's death to America, which they chant. Why shouldn't the American people need this? Uh, should, should, why shouldn't they know this? We don't need it's the Israeli Prime know, Minister though, to Rabbi. reveal this. It's not this. whether they know, it's when they know, isn't it? I mean, you don't want to give people information, sensitive information, while the talks are going on. Otherwise, you may lose your momentum. You understand we, that? We need to know whether this deal is going to leave Iran with a breakup period of 12 months, which is being reported. Mm -hmm. Some are saying less than that. Some are saying more than that. We need to know how many centrifuges are going to be spinning. But more than anything else, we need to know why it is that an oil superpower like Iran needs, Iran needs nuclear energy at all. This is a, an energy exporter. They have, they have enough oil to last them decades. Why do they even want this energy? And finally, we need to know why is the government of the United States, which is profoundly anti-genocide and a believer in democracy, negotiating with the government, which still continues to threaten Israel with annihilation. A precondition of these talks should have been that, that Rouhani had to utterly repudiate the constant threats of his boss, the spiritual leader of Iran, threatening Israel with annihilation. To ask the leader of Israel to be silent amidst those threats is to put him back in the position of Czechoslovakia and not be party to negotiations that will determine the future of his How nation. How is it productive, Rabbi, for you to call Susan Rice uh, someone who is blind to genocide. I know well, yesterday all, you said she's the one who should apologize. I know you're taking heat for this. You're a thoughtful guy. You and I
and the very security of Israel and telling the Prime Minister he can't speak. Jeremy, what is your issue with a simple speech by the Prime Minister? Why are you taking out ad after ad in the New York Times undermining the democratically elected leader of Israel? Why are you impugning his motives? Why are you saying he's doing this only for political purposes? Are you a prophet? Do you know? So give him I mean, a chance to answer, Rabbi. On the 24th answer the allegations. Of March, that's the day that this deal, that's the deadline for the deal. What's he supposed to do? When is he supposed to give well, this? This is the kind of, of filibustering and unhelpful rhetoric that comes when you try to have a serious discussion. The question is whether or not this deal and this approach of negotiating is actually the best way to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. I don't think any of us have a different goal in mind. The President of the United States, the National Security Advisor, the Prime Minister of Israel, our number one goal on, across both sides is to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. And the question is whether or not this speech at this time is a mistake on, the, on behalf of the government of Israel and trying to make its case, the very people that the prime minister needs to reach, uh, the swing Democrats in the center of the party uh, who are going to ultimately have to decide whether or not they support this deal or not, are the very people that he's alienated by doing this speech in this way. Jeremy, do and you want Netanyahu go... out? Oh, I don't take a position on exactly what happens in Israeli politics. That's for the Israeli voters to decide. I live here. Mm -hmm. What I say is that from the American point of view, the American Congress has the right to debate this deal. The American Congress will see the deal once it's made. The types of questions that Rabbi Boteach is raising are not known yet because the negotiations haven't been finalized. We're in the final stages right now. So it's not as if there's a secret deal that hasn't been revealed yet. Once it's done, once there's and a deal, then there will be time to And even the still. president says, Rabbi, even the president says right now talks seem less than 50-50. So we know what the stakes are heading into this speech. Let's hear what the prime minister has to say, especially in the United States. That's the way we analyze these things. Let's hear what he has to say. Then we'll bring you gentlemen back.